This is my Voodoo 5 build. This computer is heavily influenced by the computer I had in the early 2000s. I no longer have my original parts, but I managed to dig up the same case and the same video card. Unfortunately, most of my old parts I sold to upgrade my gear at the time. Anyway, it's been a long time since I've done a 3 dfx related video, and this is one I have been wanting to do for quite a while. So let's get into it. My original system had a 600MHz Pentium 3, and although some of you will immediately say Pentium 3 600 it's not fast enough for the Voodoo 5, it's what I had at the time, as a student, so there wasn't that much I could do about it. Considering that, we're not going for the 600MHz chip. In this build, instead, we're going with an 800MHz socket 370 copper mine Pentium 3. It's the EB variation and that means it runs on a 133 MHz bus and it has 256 kilobytes of cache. The motherboard we're using should be able to support up to 12 Latin CPUs if I decide to upgrade in the future. It's the Asus TU V4X. It uses the VIA Apollo Pro 133T chipset that can run with memory and front side bus from 66 to 133 MHz. To be fair, I would rather use an Intel chipset motherboard, but I found this one for a good price, and it should be just as fast and compatible as the Intel. With this combination, we're going for a build from the very early 2000s. The Voodoo 5 is from around January 2000, copper mine Pentium 3s were made until about the mid 2000s, and as far as I could find in my research, the motherboard is from around 2001. So we're pretty accurate here. To be fair, this motherboard and CPU would be something I would upgrade to, to get more out of my Voodoo 5 than what I was getting with my Slot 1 Pentium 3 600. As per usual, I like to pre-build my systems on the workbench. This way, I can swap things in and out and figure out what's good and what's bad while the system is outside of the case and parts are easy to switch around. As you can see on the bench, I'm using a 60x CD-ROM drive. That's quite speedy and so much so that speed was its doom. In the end of installing Windows 98, the CD-ROM blew up inside the drive. Unfortunately, I didn't catch the bang on camera, but it was the sound of shattering a Windows 98 CD in the end of the 60x drive that no longer worked, even after I removed all the yeah. pieces of the CD from the inside. Sure the CD blew up in there. Open it a little bit. <laughs> Holy crap. I did find out that the PS2 ports on the motherboard are shot. Luckily, USB works extremely well here, and that was kind of a surprise to me for Pentium 3. But sweet, that's settled then. USB only, no problem. Okay, most of the build is settled now. I can play Windows games. But wait, we're not here for this, we're here for a Voodoo 5 bit, so let's get on with it. So here we are with the main bits, the motherboard and CPU, the Voodoo 5 and the sound card. This is an Aureo Vortex 2 clone, it definitely doesn't look brilliant, but it sounds great. It's got great compatibility and the Aureo 3D Audio API works great. Here's that trusty Voodoo 5 hopefully to still go on for many years as a retro card in this system. You all probably know this video card very well. Two VSA chips, eight memory chips for a total of 64 megabytes, 32 megabytes for each VSA chip, and a Molex for power, something exotic for its time, but common now. And it sports a simple VGA out. For RAM memory, I managed to source three sticks of 133 MHz and 128 MB each for a total of 384 MB. That should be enough for any game up to 2004. So this motherboard didn't come with an I.O. shield, but back then this layout was sort of a standard. Let me show you. Comparing it to this other motherboard, you can see that the I.O. ports are exactly in the same spot. The TUV4X swapped the serial port for an onboard VGA port, but it kept the same layout and I do have an I.O. shield that fits that. 
So this is the case I wanted to use for this build. It's the same one I had in the early 2000s. I looked for it for a couple of years until about three months ago it showed up online. I cleaned the outside of the case and when I moved to the inside I saw a couple of things that were not so great. First I saw there was no power button or LEDs. And then I realized there was no hard drive and 3.5 inch drive bay. Okay, I can think of ways to work around that. But only then I saw there was no motherboard tray, rendering this part of the case completely useless. And I say part of a case intentionally. So I had to figure something out and I decided to reuse this beige and blue case I had used for a project a while ago and I know it's in good condition. So maybe if I ever find another of those wavy cases, I can swap the PC out. For storage, I'm using an 80GB hard drive. I could use an SD to ID e-card reader here, but I do have all these hard drives and they need to go somewhere. 80GB probably fits more than 100 Windows 98 games, and that's more than what I'll ever play in this system. The good thing is this motherboard has USB ports, so that makes it easy enough to transfer things and it overlaps the main function of having an SD card reader, which is transferring files. Luckily the Voodoo 5 fits snugly between the hard drive and the 3.5 floppy drive, but it blocks the use of one of the drive bays because of how long it is. I'm using a somewhat modern PSU, it's been heavily used by me when it was new, but this PC only requires a fraction of the power of modern PCs, so I think it'll work fine. Whenever I have a rare video card, I like to use extra cooling. So I rigged this fan right in front of the Voodoo's own fans. That was the last part. I already have the system installed from when I put it together on the workbench. So all we need now is some games. For this build, I didn't worry too much about performance. Some of the games have inbuilt frame counters, some were running DirectX, so they work with fraps to display an FPS counter. But the goal of this build isn't really performance. This build is something I hope to play games in and have fun with. And I know the Voodoo 5 can crank out more frames if I have a faster CPU, but frankly, I don't even know if I want that. Maybe keeping the CPU as a bottleneck will keep my Voodoo 5 from some strain and buy it a longer lifetime. Oni was developed by Bungie West and it's got an anime vibe that I appreciate. Look at the lady giving you instructions. That's a manga character for sure. It's Chung. I found him. Dead. If she was moving, I would say anime, but I suppose it was a bit too much for the time. So in Oni, you shoot and you punch and jump and slide and you go on about doing missions as you would expect. This game got me wanting to fight hand to hand with everyone. The fighting mechanics are really fun. Unfortunately, some of the bad guys decided they should just shoot me instead of doing karate. A friend asked me to try to run this game, so here it is. It runs... okay. Black and White is an interesting game. In it, you are a god. And it has these mechanics where you do favors and miracles and the faith in you grows. And so do your powers because that's absolutely how things work. Frame rates are not the best, it's an uncompetitive RTS game, so I can play it like this. Furthermore, when you get into the temple, I can see there's a problem with the textures, and that's a bit annoying and distracting. But fun game, really pulls you into doing one quest after another, and it even makes you take care of your own weird pet. In this case, a standing up cow. Hey cow. Clive Baker's Undying is always nice to play. It looks really, really good. You have some strange powers like a stone thing and a spell that makes you see things that happened in the past in the location you're at. Sorry it took me so long to get. You start trying to figure out why your dying friend and owner of the mansion is being attacked by supernatural things. It's kind of a horror game and it does have the occasional jump scare, but it's really fun. I definitely recommend this one if you can take it. I do get the chills though.
This is a demo for the game Rally Trophy. Pretty fun, although I'm really bad at driving games, especially rally games. They are extra difficult with the Scandinavian flicks and all. But yeah, seems to work alright. I could spend a couple more minutes and embarrass myself a bit more with this. This is the original Ghost Recon game. It's not a game you usually see, but I want to show you that you can play basically anything from the very early 2000s. Yeah, a better video card, stronger CPU would benefit the gameplay, but to me it's fun to see this kind of stuff. It's not my favorite kind of game, it's one of those realistic things in which you have to go stealthy and I'm not very patient with stuff like this, but yeah, it was fun to see. And who doesn't like a good sim game? SimCity is such a classic. I think I played all games of the series released for PC, and at one time I did play quite a bit of 3000. So here I'm building a small town to make sure everything is working. I'm not having fun at all, no, whoever has fun playing video games anyway. But yeah, the game runs alright, and it's fun as usual, regardless of what I said in the past. I had plans to showcase many other games. There are just so many from this time period I enjoy. Here are some examples. Gothic, Serious Sam, GTA 3, Return to Castle Wolfenstein. But I think we have gone on for long enough. So tell me in the comment section what you think of this build, what you would do different, what games you like from this period, and have a lovely weekend. Do subscribe if you can, and click the like button if this is something you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.